General Manager A.J. Preller joins us and A.J. will start with the one trade that you did make today a left handed pitcher for the bullpen. Yeah we were able to make a trade there right before the deadline and get Mark Zepchinski. Now we're uh, not, your microphone is not open here. Let's see if we can do something about that. Yeah, we, had, like, we were able to go get Mark Zepchinski. Um, you know, Mark coming over from the Cleveland Indians. He's been, you know, in, in the past, he had a chance to pitch with the Cardinals and the Blue Jays and the Indians. And, you know, he's a guy that our scouts, Randy Smith and Steve Lyons, saw earlier. You know, they've, they've been following him all season long and just felt like we wanted to complete the bullpen by going and giving us an option to go get some left-handed hitters. And he's got some experience. He's got some postseason experience, too, being with the Cardinals. Yeah, when he was at the Cardinals, he was part of that run, I guess it was in 2011. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was one of the more effective guys down the stretch that year in the National League. Ian Kennedy leading off the Padre third, and then it'll be Venable and Salarte. You know, this is a frustrating time for fans, and I know it's been a busy and frustrating in many ways days for you because fans would like to know, hmm, how close did you come, and who were the players, and you can't you can't reveal that information for obvious reasons. Unless you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, honestly, we were, we were pretty busy as far as, you know, just, just getting prepared and being ready for the deadline. So it was, it was, didn't really, you know, follow too much of the uh, the reports that were out in the media. But, um, yeah, no, I think it's it's an exciting time for baseball. Obviously, the last few weeks have been a lot of moves and trades in the last couple of days. And, you know, we worked hard to try to improve the team, both long term and short term. And, uh, and ultimately, you know, we, we ended up making the one move that we were able to make. But, uh, you know, it wasn't for a lack of effort. How much did the uh, recent success of the team, 10 and 4, influence uh, today's activity? Uh, I mean, we try, to, try not to get too up and down. I think we overall have a, you know, an idea about where our club's at and what we're trying to do. I think, you know, we do have faith that, uh, you know, that our team, the, 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 you know, the better play we've seen here in the last few weeks, that you know, we're looking to extend that here in the second half. And, um, you know, I think, like we said all year, we feel like we get good pitching every night. And that always keeps you in the ball games, and you know, we're trying to find a way to put more, put more runs on the board and. You know, I think it was it was a, a factor in what we did, but but ultimately it was you know, it wasn't necessarily the deciding factor. I think we went out and tried to make additions and set values for certain players, and if we were able to do it, good. And if not, you know, we felt good about a core group of guys we have going forward. AJ, that's the point we made a little bit ago prior to the deadline, and I feel strongly that because you did not make a deal, winter meetings you made those deals. You go into Peoria, at this point, same guys, and I think that bodes well in the clubhouse to where they kind of look at one another and say, hey guys, you know what? AJ put us together. We might as well stick together and give it a run down the stretch. Have you had a chance to talk to any of the coaches or Pat Murphy or the players after the fact? Yeah, I've, I've heard a few players say that, mention that. A couple of the coaches mentioned that. Um, you know, and you don't you don't want to get in a situation where you're constantly making changes and you're turning things around. You know, uh, you know, daily or weekly. And you know, I think the you know I think the staff has to feel like, uh, and rightfully so, that you know, hey, this this is our group, and you know, now, now let's go ahead and figure out a way to get things better I'm sure the last few weeks as a player you know there are guys wondering hey you know am I going to be here what's exactly going on and you know how the, how this thing is going to turn out and I think you know hopefully uh, hopefully guys now feel feel good about here's the situation in the next few weeks we're able to play good baseball here's the 10th pitch of the event <laughs> Kennedy wearing out Phelps and he finally drives one to right center field he knew what he was doing that's between the outfielders and Kennedy had he been a normal uh, Position player might have had a triple there, but he just coasted his way into second base. What an at bat! Look at the pitching core up on the railing there to root, root for Kennedy. Ten pitches and then rips a double to right center. Working Phelps head down and rifle in that right center field corner. Hey, maybe some GMs are going to call AJ Preller. They need a hitter. <laughs> AJ, was there one certain core of players, or was it a lot of without giving any names? Because I know you can't do that. Was there one certain core, maybe three to a handful of guys, or was it a, an abundance of players that other teams inquired about? Yeah, there was a lot of players on our roster. I, mean, I think it shows that, you know, we have some, you know, we have players that, that are attractive to other clubs. But it's also, you know, the product this time of year. You know, you're going to get teams that are going to look for, for core players and guys that are, you know, plus players and some of, the, some of the better guys on our team. And then it's also a situation where you, you get teams calling, they're looking for good fits and upgrades on what they have. That may be a bench player or, you know, left-handed bat off the bench, or they can play all three outfield spots. So it was a combination of both, and uh, you know, so we, we it made for for a pretty active last few weeks as far as discussions. The heaviest rumors were that, and of course, Craig Kimbrell is a prized property, and uh, with his 30 saves, that the Yankees and Houston had interest. Was that correct? It was uh, there, uh, uh, Craig, and you know, there are a lot of teams. Rightfully so. I mean, he's, he's uh, arguably the best reliever in the game of baseball today, and. You know, I think when you know when other teams look at us and 
you know, if you're closer to the bottom part of the stands than the top, you know, and, and you've got really valuable assets like Craig, that's a guy that a lot of teams actually asked about. And, you know, ultimately, you know, he's a guy that, that you know we like having here with the Padres, and, uh, and hopefully he's going to save a lot of ball games for us in the next couple of weeks. The uh, trade we just talked about it in the last inning that we feel uh, in the NL West has been quiet in terms of the publicity, but it looks like a terrific deal for the Giants to get Mike Leake. Yeah, I think th those are uh, those are the moves that when they come across the wire, you're, you're not pleased to see. But you know, obviously, uh, you know, he's been a good pitcher and uh, you know going to help out. Obviously, it's a very strong team already, so it'll you know make things harder for us. But uh, we understand, you know, we're, we're we're trying to chase down those teams ahead of us, and you know, we're going to have to play really good baseball here. AJ, be honest with me. Within the last, you've been with the team on the flight, right, to Florida, yeah. and you were in New York with us, correct? Yeah. How many hours of sleep and how many times <laughs> did you call room service? <laughs> Send up food to your room. And who who spent time in the room uh, with you trying to, you know, Fred Ullman, uh, Fred Ullman Jr., because uh, there's a lot of people on this trip. Yeah, right. we had a, you know, a group of uh, group of guys you know, here the last few weeks and then the last couple of days and, you know, set up a war room type deal in the suite similar to a draft room. And, um, you know, we were able to you know, you end up, obviously, the last few days especially, you're, you're working pretty much around the clock as, as the phones are ringing and you have guys that are, you know, generating ideas, guys that are looking at, you know, different aspects of trades, uh, definitely have, you know, s you know, on the phone with your scouts and, um, you know, just constantly looking at looking at, looking at at the things that are on the board or, or things that we would compare to other offers and, you know, trying to make decisions on what what will help our team get better. And what do you take away? First time as GM, first trade deadline that's coming past. Uh, I, I think, you know, I think it's, it's I think it's, one of the things is, you know, to see that there's a lot of interest in our players. You know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we made some good decisions by standing pat in some cases. Um, but you know, it was pretty typical of a normal trade deadline situation that I've seen in the last, you know, 10 years in Texas. There's a base hit by Salarte, and around third comes Ian Kennedy to score, and the Padre pitcher dents home plate, and it's a two-to-one ball game as Salarte delivers his 35th RBI of the year. I think the other thing too is you know it's it's, it's the non-waiver trade deadline on the 31st. You know after the 31st, obviously they're they're you know they you still have an opportunity to make deals. Right. And, you know you, you have to it's a process. We have to pass a player through waivers. Um, but you know it's it's not necessarily the last time you'll have to make you know to make to either add somebody or make a player. Yeah, that's something that I think a lot of the fans don't they realize. They think well now the deadline has been passed. You can't trade again to say September in the call-up time. But any time you can lay out the the bait, can't you? Yeah, no, it's it's a different process that starts here now in the next month. Um, but yeah, it's definitely you know it's a situation where now, you know, every day players will be passed through the waiver wire, and you know every team is is looking to block players or let players go through, and then you know if players do get through the waiver wire, you know, you're able to you're able to still go ahead and acquire players, and as long as you acquire them before August 30th or 31st, uh, you know they're able to play in the postseason for you. I got to be honest with you, you sound tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he looks tired. I mean, you're, you're GM. It's trade deadline. You're spent. I mean, that's, that's part of it. You signed up for that. You knew what you're getting into, right? And this is what you love to do. Yeah, I didn't bring the uh, the eight pipes on the air tonight. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Here's Matt Kemp. Set a ball deep to center fielder Yelich his first time. Would it help if I said you look great? <laughs> uh, that works. That, that, that works for me, definitely. <laughs> Trying to pump you up a little bit. <laughs> It's going to be an interesting book. Ten years from now, I want to read the book <laughs> on all the conversations and the building of a ball club and I fly out of play. How's so Coach Welke doing, by the way? Uh, he's actually back in San Diego right now, and he was uh, he was available on phone. He was weighing in on a lot of different things, and he was in the in the room leading up to the uh, you know to the to the deadline. And so when we were in San Diego, getting ready for this period, so yeah. he's. Uh, <clears throat> it's Don Welk, he was a you know, senior vice president for us on the scouting side, and you know, a big part of what we're doing with the, with the Padres. Surprised that Cole Hamels went to the Rangers, not some place else. Not really, honestly. I think uh, you know there are a handful of clubs that you know that I think probably had the prospect package that the Phillies were looking for, and I know that uh, you know they they're a team that you know I know from from the past that the Phillies had interest in a lot of their players, and they've got you know some depth in terms of numbers on the prospect side, so. You know, if he had circled two or three places for for Hamels to land, I guess is you know Texas would have been one of them. Kept the shortstop. There's one back to first and a double play. So the Padres settle for one. AJ Preller 
In a busy time, it's nice of you to come up and visit with us, and uh, we'll look forward to getting back home. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, AJ. AJ, thanks. 2-1 after two and a half.